Chloe and welcome to Extremely Cosmic. Oh, I've got black roses. Oh, that's really exciting. Sorry, I'm playing Animal Crossing. This is very rude of me. Welcome to another week. It is officially week 11 of these vlogs. Honestly, when are they gonna stop? On another note, thank you guys for watching my last video. I know I got a little bit deep on it. I talked about some personal things that I'm moving through right now and sort of stuff in my likes and dislikes that I'm working through right now. So it means a lot that you guys looked at it and watched it and sort of somewhat enjoyed it. Very excitingly, I think I mentioned it in the last vlog. I have filmed my Buffy video i don't know whether you guys will have seen it by the time this goes up but i am editing it right now and i'm in the process it's taken a long time because i did the voiceover and then i have to line that up with all the clips so it's taken a long time right now i spend most of my day watching videos and also playing animal crossing because i just got my last amiibo card this is marcel i'm very excited to have him on my island he looks like a little mime and his little catchphrase is no which means no in french very excited about that he is my last villager on my island and once i put him on my island my island's full so hopefully fingers crossed soon we can get that island tour out before animal crossing becomes a dead thing literally just on imovie and i was looking at the vlog that from last week and how much i went on a massive rant in that and how embarrassing it was and i forgot that i included the tiktok that i made i, I have like i put it in with like no explanation whatsoever and i forgot to tell you guys there was like a trend going around on tiktok about like this is drag race thing i know in the last vlog i was like i'm not interested in drag i'm not interested in drag race anymore which i'm not but there was this trend on tiktok to do like a verse in this song that was from Drag Race about like your crush and who you love and then I did one and I put it in the last vlog without like no context whatsoever and um, I've just found it and started creasing at myself because it's the most catchiest thing I've ever done in my life Niles Crane we can have a latte at Cafe Nervosa then a trip to the opera will bring us closer pour me a sherry you're my favourite psychiatrist even if you can't and your trousers will get on with it I treat you better than your pet bird baby oh my god I just wish I was Daphne literally lockdown has made me so insane that all week since I made that vlog I've been singing the line over and over again we can have a latte at Cafe Nervosa then trip to the opera will bring us closer pour me a sherry you're my favorite psychiatrist I am losing my mind I swear to god I know that I have red cheeks normally but do you see this this is called embarrassment oh I'm blushing oh no it's a really fun thing to have a Krishna fictional character because well one their whole like fate and their personality and everything is created by someone and it's not going to change because it's like set in stone on a tv show or a movie or something like that so I love it because they're like on a tv show you you can make up like stories and like scenarios in your head like with them in your like dreams and stuff like much more easier than if it was a real person because they're a fictional character is this making any sense whatsoever i don't know anyways love fictional characters do whatever you please if you like someone who isn't a fictional character i'm not i'm not having a go at you i'm just saying fictional characters are way more fun because they're fictional you know also fictional characters are an absolute burden and you probably shouldn't have a crush on them because they ruin your standards of everyone in the real world i'm gonna go play some more animal crossing just whip these out of nowhere i hope you guys have a good day i hope i can record something the rest of the week i will see you guys some other time hi friends happy thursday that happy introduction was just to kind of mask the fact that i am extremely out of breath right now very very hot and i'm about to go and like wash myself down with a lot of cold water. I have just come back from a bike ride. I actually just rode down the park to see my friend. We had this like socially distanced catch up. It was really nice. I haven't seen her since before lockdown. So that was really cool. And I'm back now. Not to be a typical British person, but the weather outside is so hot. I, I am literally roasting right now. I am so hot. It's like at the point where like you're breathing and you're just breathing in heat. There is like no cool air. There's like a breeze but it just doesn't seem to be doing anything. Like I'm just constantly hot. I have no more plans for the weekend. I keep on trying to edit the Buffy video, but I keep forgetting about it. So that's what's happening there. It is so hot, oh my God. Hi everyone, it's Friday right now. And I just came up from the breakfast table where I started crying over Jenna Marbles. So um, that's how my morning's going. <laughs> I have a lot of feelings about it. I just want to chat for a second about YouTube and um, how it's going and what is happening on it because i have a lot of thoughts and i have a lot of um things to say so i just want to hopefully it's going to be quick so that i don't have to edit it thank god because i hate editing stuff um so hopefully it's going to be quick for my sake 
But um, for your sake, um, hopefully you get something out of this and get to know my point of view. I found out that she was quitting YouTube, maybe forever, maybe just for now, but I found out that she was quitting YouTube and I don't know, I just, I couldn't really process the thought at the time because it was about half ten at night I went on. I think I was like late to the news and I was tired, I was very hot because it was a very hot day yesterday and I couldn't really process. But I woke up this morning and I properly watched the video um, and I don't know, I just got really upset about it. First of all, I'm not defending Jenna's actions. I know she made some mistakes in the past that she's not very proud of. And I think everyone, everyone ever, like, in the world has bad moments in their past that they're not proud of and that they wish they could change but they just can't because they happened and they've just got to apologise for them, move forward, move on, realise that that was wrong, realise their mistakes and just keep on making better content that doesn't include things like that. Most people who have made a mistake have apologised for it in some kind of way and have moved forward. There's a lot of people that haven't moved forward that I also want to talk about. But Jenna, um, on the whole, was one of the most unproblematic people on the whole entire internet her content over the last like three or four years has been literally just funny humorous sort of stupid content that it just has no meaning and doesn't offend anyone it's family friendly and for me personally uh i was i was 10 years old when i started watching youtube and 2011 and i was around my friend's house and i remember her like showing me on a laptop she's like look at this amazing youtuber i found she's so cool like she's called jenna marbles and that's why for me personally jenna marbles and pewdiepie were the first ever two youtubers that i discovered on the platform and that i was like wow these people are hilarious this is something that i want to watch and ever since i've been watching this i've been watching jenna for literally around nine years of my life <laughs> and because i'm 19 that is literally all of my teenage years i have been watching her channel and her videos also you guys all know that i started youtube in 2015 i talk about it a lot that i've been on youtube for five years now yay woo um and Jenna was part of that. Jenna was part of the reason why I wanted to start a YouTube channel and why um, why I just got on the platform in the first place. I was like, you know what, I want to be part of this world. It's fun and it's funny and, it, you know, I, I want to be part of that world. It was just a massive big blow, really, that the person that inspired me to make this channel, one of the people, was it, it isn't there anymore and isn't making videos anymore and it's really sad. From my point of view the other thing i want to say is that even though i was watching jenna back then back in the day i do not remember any of her very problematic content like the um racist kind of stuff i don't remember any of that i do remember the what girls do what guys do videos i watched those religiously when i was that young and i didn't see the problem with it i just was like oh this is hilarious i relate to this um obviously the girl ones um i'm really sorry that i got upset before it's just it's kind of a big thing to me to have someone like that that i've watched for so long and it's been a big part of my life sort of go i respect jenna's decision i realized that you know perhaps it's not right for her and if she doesn't feel comfortable in it i don't want her to feel uncomfortable making videos just to please her audience i don't think that's right the other youtubers i would like to address are shane dawson and jeffree star i do not condone any of their actions whatsoever and i don't really know what to say about them. They're the type of people that I was adhering to before when I was saying that other people have done worse things around the time of 2011 and that's why I want to talk about Shane Dawson. I do remember when he would do parody videos. I can't really remember the racist ones but I remember Shanene and I don't know who that was a parody of but at the time it seemed like it cringed to me because I just I just didn't like it. It was cringeworthy to me. I didn't like the voice that he was putting on. I think Shane's just become really toxic and he hasn't addressed the things that he's done in his past and I think his very recent paragraph about his statement regarding James James Charles and the James Charles situation was pretty weird and disgusting. Some of the things they said in that statement I can't remember but I just remember feeling a bit uneasy about them.
Jeffree Star, I have a little bit to say about. I myself have Jeffree Star's makeup. I have his mirror. He was one of those people who would buy his stuff as soon as it come out because I loved his makeup so much. I will not be purchasing any more of his makeup. I think I'm completely done. There's plenty more makeup brands out there that you can support. Um, little small owned businesses as well as like sort of brands that are in supermarkets. I know Revolution from Soup Drug is a very good makeup brand. In hindsight, I'm really sorry that I would support someone like that because I wasn't aware of the things he'd done in the past. I just cannot stand these people who will literally like sell their soul for him and defend him with their very life on the internet. It's a very sickening thing. And it's very sickening that fans of Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star are literally besotted with them. It's like literal psychopaths. It's crazy. So I've unfollowed him from everything. Um, I was never following Shane Dawson for a very long time. Going forward, I want to suggest to you some unproblematic YouTubers that you could be watching instead of these type of people like Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson. If you're interested in family vloggers, I very much recommend the Ballinger family, who are Colleen Ballinger's family. They're doing a great job of raising their children. I personally don't really like children, but I've really Really enjoy watching like family vloggers like even though I don't want children myself I feel like I can live throughout their videos and see their life and it's quite nice. Also the Miller fam who were formerly Grace for the Millers I really enjoy their content they are a sort of adoptive family there's about god like six or seven kids they have. Two in a zoo are another family they are a family of five I think. Also one of the best down to earth relatable people in the net Louise Pentland I am obsessed with the content I've been watching it for like I don't know, about three years now. If you like gaming, I can go and suggest Shaperka to you. She is a really funny um, streamer on Twitch, also a YouTuber. Uh, she's mainly she does a lot of Animal Crossing content, if that's your sort of thing. Also, Tag Back TV. I watch a lot of Animal Crossing playthroughs on his channel. He's really good. PewDiePie is still a very good YouTuber. I know that he's done some questionable things in the past, which we do not condone. However, he's moved on, and I know that he is a very respectable person. I've met him in real life. He's a very, very nice person. He has, like, apologised to the things that he's done and I feel like he's really grown as a person on the platform and he's not silly as he used to be and I still really like his videos sometimes. Jacksepticeye is still really cool. He's an unproblematic YouTuber. Um, I think his content's great. I wish you would do more Animal Crossing videos. That's all I have to say. I hope that you guys understand my point of view on this kind of thing, perhaps, and maybe we can move forward in a more positive atmosphere. I don't really think I'll be making any other videos this week for the vlog, so I really hope that you've enjoyed this week. Hopefully you didn't get too down with this section. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel because I post new videos every single week. Also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It means a lot that somebody might be enjoying these videos out there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for supporting me. A small YouTuber that probably has no chance. Thank you for supporting me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Future generations, see what I had to put up with?